Hi, my name is Bill Cordua and I'm a geology professor associated with the University of Wisconsin River Falls. It's my goal in this series of short films to illustrate to you the wonderful geology we have around us all in Pierce and St. Croix counties. I'm standing on top of Mounds Park in River Falls, Wisconsin, and even though I'm over a thousand feet above sea level and more than a thousand miles away from the nearest ocean, if I was standing here 454 million years ago, I'd be covered by a shallow sea. The evidence for this startling fact is contained within a formation we call the Platteville Formation, which is extensively exposed around River Falls. The Platteville is a resistant rock that holds up the flat top hills all around town, including the mound. We're in the remains of an old limestone quarry that was cut into the side of the mound, and behind me we see a good exposure of the Platteville Formation. The platform formation is largely made out of a rock called dolostone. Dolostone is a lot like limestone, except it contains significantly more magnesium. You notice how the platform breaks in nice slabs along its bedding plane, and these uh, slabby rock masses like this make for excellent building stone. And that's basically why these little quarries were made, to provide building stone for the growing town of River Falls. The Platteville Formation was named for outcrops in Platteville, Wisconsin, where it was an important host rock for the lead zinc mines that brought in a lot of settlers to the state in the 1880s. The brown mineral you see in the rock is phalarite, a major ore of zinc. The gray mineral you see here is galena, an ore of lead, and it's also a Wisconsin state mineral. The brassy mineral you see around it is an iron sulfide that is related to pyrite. These mineralizing fluids did not come this far north, but the Platteville Formation does have its uses locally as crushed and building stone. We're in Veterans Park in downtown River Falls. As you can see behind me, the foundation of a lot of the older buildings in town are made out of the slabby Platteville Formation. We're down on the UW River Falls campus by the library where you can see even today the slabby Platteville comes in very handy for making the painting walls. Some platteville layers don't make very good decorative stone, as seen here. No, these rocks were not hit by a bomb or even a rock hammer. It's just normal freeze and thaw and other weathering over the years can deteriorate the platteville rapidly. This weathering happened within a few years of its being quarried. If you look along the bedding plane surfaces in the platteville, uh, you're likely to find some, some pretty nice little fossils, such as I have right here. Uh, they're not that common, but it's always fun to look where you see an exposure of the platteville. Here we're looking at some typical fossils from the Platteville Formation. Uh, these are the most common kinds. They're called brachiopods. They're a type of shellfish, and we can find their imprints scattered rather thickly on this bedding plane surface. This coiled fossil is a gastropod or a snail fossil. You can also find these fairly commonly within the Platteville Formation. These are some of the largest fossils uh, from the Platteville. These cylinder-shaped fossils are part of nautiloid cephalopods, which is a long way of saying that this was a squid-like organism, and it had long shells that were partitioned or filled with gas, and the squid-like organism could propel itself across the seafloor by expelling the gas. Uh, these can get up to 10 feet long, and they were probably the alpha predator on the uh, seafloor at that time. These fossils allow geologists to do a good job of reconstructing the environment in which this formation was deposited, as we can see here from this painting by Zednek Burian from 1957. This was a biologically rich, shallow ocean environment teeming with life. You can see the brachiopod shellfish in the foreground. In the background, you can see some sea lilies and coral. And of course, you see the large nautiloid cephalopod fossils uh, dominating the middle of the painting. fossils in these rocks probably convince you that these were deposited in a shallow sea, but how do we know this sea was here 454 million years ago? In order to see evidence for that, we have to go to a somewhat different spot. We're in a rock quarry a few miles away from River Falls where we can see the Platteville Formation well exposed in the walls of uh, the quarry. Uh, this is private property and we're here by permission. Uh, you should never enter into a quarry without getting the owner's permission or without taking the proper safety precautions. Notice the different horizontal beds in the quarry wall. 
Differences in bedding relate to differences in depositional environment that occurred when this rock was being laid down. There's one particular layer that we are interested in studying today. That layer is exposed right at the top of the quarry wall in those thinly layered beds. If you dig around in the recesses in those thinly layered units, you'll come across a clay material that we call bentonite. Bentonite is this clay-like material which is really old volcanic ash. This is important because as this was being erupted, it was picking up a certain amount of radioactive potassium. And that potassium was trapped within this rock and over time it's decayed at a known rate to daughter materials which are also trapped within this rock. This ash was erupted from volcanoes far to the east that were active as the Appalachian Mountains rose. This ash is found in rocks all over the eastern half of the U.S., suggesting a very large eruption. This ash layer will be our timekeeper. There's really only a small amount of radioactive material in this rock. In fact, you need very sensitive instruments to even detect it and its decay products. So consequently, the presence of this rock in our area does not constitute any sort of threat to human health. By measuring how much radioactive material there is still left in this bentonite and how much decay product has formed, uh, we can establish the age at which this volcanic ash was erupted. And that's approximately 454 million years ago. So even if we don't find the volcanic ash layer in a region, if a rock contains these particular fossil species, we can infer that the rock formed at about the same time. Detective work such as this is what has allowed geologists to deduce the long and complex history of our planet.